never seen you speak about what to do about a penile fracture. About 10 years ago, a woman got on top, got too excited, and slid, slid down too low and bent my penis, causing a rupture of the blood vessels that assist with my erection. It was very painful, but I didn't go to the emergency room, but it, and it took weeks to heal. Now I have less of an erection. With Cialis, it is better, but still not enough. What can be done? So this is great. Um, and, and, and one thing I want you to think about when it comes to a penile fracture or an injury of the penis in general is that your, your um, erection is just like any other part of your body. If you get whammed up against anything, you know, a hematoma can form, a bruise can form, a nodule can form. Like you may even have areas of your body that got hit years ago and you're still like, wow, there's a little lump there that never really went away. So the penile tissue is very similar. Um, what tends to happen after a penile issue, either it's going to resorb itself and get right back to business, or you might have a little bit of scar tissue underneath there. And so when the scar tissue starts to form, I want you to think of it like, um, like you have a, 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 a stream of water that's rushing through, right? And think of the stream of water as like blood flow. And then imagine someone takes and drops a big old boulder in the middle of that stream. Well, now that water is going around the boulder. Is some, maybe it's going underneath it, but probably not. Maybe it's going over top it, possibly if it's deep enough. But what that boulder does is it changes the flow of the stream. Well, a scar, scar tissue in the penile tissue is going to do something really similar. It's going to change the flow of blood flow so that blood may not get to all of the areas quite like it used to because now you have a blockage or a scar tissue or fibrosis in the way of it. And oftentimes, if you've had a penile fracture or injury, you can take and while you're flaccid, you can just take and palpate or feel through it you might even feel a little bit of a lump or a little bit of scar tissue underneath there. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But um, oftentimes we can very much isolate it. And then too, if you were to go to, the, to a doctor who had a Doppler, you know, or, or an ult can do an ultrasound of the blood flow of the tissue, you'll notice that that area will have a reduced amount of blood flow. So what can be done about that? Because now all of a sudden, what can happen are one of two things. One, you can start to develop peronies. You can get a little pain in that area that happens every now and then. You can actually start to have some type of shifting or growing in a different direction of the tissue, you know, based off of that, because you start to have pulling of the scar tissue. You can start to have reduced blood flow. Um, or you can, you know, it can be just fine and, and the body can resorb that scar tissue and you can keep going and flowing as normal. But for those of you who actually get scar tissue there, there are a few ways that clinically we know that we can help that scar tissue resorb itself. You know, you can go all the way to the extreme and you can see a doctor that maybe wants to do PRP or plasma rich um, protein injections or the P shot into the area to kind of help it heal, brings growth factors, healing factors, and can heal that way. You can actually consider um, then, then up from that is you can actually consider shock wave therapy or sound wave therapy or acoustic wave therapy that can either take place at home or at the, or in the clinic. And what they're doing is they're shooting sound waves to kind of break that tissue up and, and help it heal by bringing the growth factors and the healing factors. And then another thing that you can actually do in those cases is pumping because what the pumping then does too, is it helps break through that, some of the plaque that's developed there but also the same thing brings growth factors and healing factors to the area so that you can actually kind of undo some of that fibrotic tissue or that hardened tissue that's happened there over the course of time. So, and then two, you know, just making sure that your nitric oxide levels are optimized because nitric oxide is what's going to help those blood vessels expand and give blood flow to where they need to go. But um, a fractured, fractured penis or injured penis, Typically, over time, if you start to have issues, you have scar tissue underneath where that pain happened, and now it's just a matter of you know figuring out which regimen is right for you, whether a combination of those three things or four things, or going specifically in a in a particular direction to to help ameliorate that. Um, they've used verapamil in the past to help break down those plaques. They have Zyaflex that you can. Um, um, you know, like a cream that can break down um, plaques underneath the uh, tissue. 
So there's a variety of different things that can be done. Me, I like kind of the old school approach to it. I, I, I like shockwave and I like pumping when it comes to a little fibrotic tissue like that. And you'd be surprised at how you can bring things back to where they were before. Awesome.